put it in context, and the context, the, the really important step, was Her Majesty's incredibly successful visit to the Republic of Ireland. Remember, before that happened, uh, the Republican movement were positioning themselves to oppose the visit, hoping that they would gain in popularity in the South by doing so. And then they discovered uh, that the Queen's visit was enormously popular with the people in the Republic, and they quickly changed their position. And this is yet a further example of the extent to which they have changed their position. I mean, that was the, what I really wanted to ask you, because in terms of those people who want a united Ireland and people such as yourself uh, who want to preserve the union, what does this tell us that it's kind of business as usual or polite relations between the leading Republican Party and the representative of the Crown? Yeah, it just shows us the, the Republican movement that originally was a genuinely Republican uh, and wanted to disrupt the United Kingdom is moving further and further away from that and closer and closer to some degree of normality. But they'll not really reach normality, full normality, until they're in a position to actually face their past uh, and, and face it for what it was, a rather dirty, nasty terrorist campaign. But does this mean that, you know, a united Ireland is kind of off the agenda for now? Oh, yes, but it, it was never all that seriously on the agenda. Uh, and even with what has happened in Scotland, it's not, I think, coming back on the agenda. And I mean, there was always the question of, uh, as I understand it, if there were referendums on both sides of the border, then it could happen. Oh, yes, the, in theory, that is the position. Uh, but there has been no effort by uh, the Republicans to, uh, to suggest there be a referendum, uh, and quite obviously for that, because they can see themselves how little support there would be, even amongst nationalists. I mean, that. I mean, that said, Sinn Féin and Gerry Adams in particular in the South, in the Irish Republic, are gaining quite a lot of support. They're becoming a very significant political force, aren't they? Well, they did have a, 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 a degree of support coming to them when they were opposing the uh, European Union austerity programmes. Now that the Republic has come out of that programme, the position is changing, and the opinion poll earlier this evening uh, showed the... Uh, Jerry's position dropping three points, uh, Fianna Foyle coming on, on par with them, but significantly Fine Gael moving six points, seven points ahead of, of, of Sinn Féin now. So uh, I think we're going to see that the little surge of support they had, which related to the circumstances of the uh, EU bailout, isn't going to apply now that Ireland has moved out of that and is recovering economically. And do you believe in spite of what you say about wanting them to reconcile with what they did in the past, that the shadow of the government, if I can put it like that, is now removed from uh, politics in the island of Ireland? Generally speaking, yes. There are still a few wrinkles in the situation due to what we call dissident Republicans. Uh, but while there are a, a number of people there with the capacity uh, to do harm, they have no significant popular support, and that's the really crucial thing. And people like Gerry Adams and Martin McGuinness and Gerry Kelly, who were associated with the paramilitary era, have genuinely moved on and, and given up violence, in your view? Yes, that's, that's one's assessment of it, but it would be better to hear it more clearly and more unequivocally. And indeed, what they should be doing at this stage is, is telling dissident Republicans uh, that they, you know, they understand where they were because they had been in that position themselves, but they realised that the terrorist campaign was never going to succeed and was the wrong thing to do. If they could address distant Republicans in those clear, unequivocal terms, that would do a lot to bring an end to that. How difficult do you think this must have been for Prince Charles, bearing in mind his closeness to his uncle, Lord Mountbatten? Well, obviously he decided to do it. And if he decided to do it, I, I don't think it, it helps uh, for us to try and speculate as to what was in his mind when he, was, when he made that decision. I'm sure it would have been a, a difficult decision for him to make, but he has decided to do it, and well done. I, I mean, what I was really relating to, I mean, you two and almost anyone in Northern Ireland has been personally involved or personally affected by the violence, people you've known very well being killed. Does that make it more difficult or less difficult to seek reconciliation to shake hands? Well... Yes, I know. I, I understand the, that aspect of it, and uh, all of us in the early stages of, of the, the talks and all the rest would find it initially extremely difficult uh, to be dealing with people who had been engaged in violence. But I think it's, it, 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 we all want to see the situation improve. We all want to see people be able to move on. It will be easier to achieve that if those who had been engaged in violence can be frank about what they did. And 
equally frank about putting all of that behind them. I don't think we should be left with any ambiguity. On, on a lighter note, what do you make of the um, gay cake ruling, as it's been called in Northern Ireland? Well, yes, um, I have a suspicion that both parties were being rather silly, but there you are. <laughs> are you pleased that you can now order a cake in support of gay marriage? And... Well, yes, but uh, does that mean you could have on top of the cake anything else that, that might be regarded as, as, as provocative by other people? But I don't know. I think really it's, uh, you know, uh, again, I can understand people feeling, uh, having mixed feelings about uh, equal, equal marriage, uh, but the law has moved there and I think it's time for us all to move on. David Trimble.